Church. Sure, everybody knows that you know eight billion people have been watching uh, Qatar World Cup, and as you can see, uh, uh, you know it just every four years, you know people come from all over the world and to watch this beautiful game. Uh, you know where teams come together and and different style. The the Brazilian, uh, you know. Uh, uh, the samba dancing and the uh, Spanish tiki uh, tack and uh, and then the street forward kick and run uh, uh, English and Nigerian creativity and Africa and now the Arabs uh, now they uh, they have the chance to showcase uh, uh, their story so uh, for the first time and uh, first time uh, the World Cup will be held. Uh, uh, in uh, the Middle East, uh, Qatar and winter and from a small Arab Muslim country. Uh, this is making a lot of people nervous. And uh, since uh, Qatar was uh, uh, granted that World Cup uh, more than 10 years ago, a lot of doubts, a lot of questions, uh, people talking about uh, migrant workers, uh, workers' uh, rights and human rights and treatments and gay rights, all human issue now uh, is piling on a small country uh, of Qatar. Three million people, they're going to uh, host uh, almost three million uh, for, for a month. Uh, Eight billion people be watching from somewhere, cafe, churches, uh, work, street, everywhere. Uh, that's really where most people are going to watch the game. So why the West is really getting so uptight about uh, this small country uh, of Qatar hosting uh, the World Cup? Uh, I'm not a, a big uh, a fan of FIFA. It's the most corrupt uh, uh, organization. We all know that. But FIFA is becoming, uh, you know, a, a tool for, uh, for for the West, like a soft power to impose this global. Uh, view and culture on uh, uh, other nations, and and I know Qatar is probably heavy-handed in uh, to, to 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 really to guarantee and be warranted this uh, World Cup. They don't have a, a soccer history. The, the, the German team uh, jet uh, was turned away because they came with the jets. As all of a sudden, the Germans now f found out it's uh, the biggest problem in the world. You now not. Nazism and not apartheid occupation of Israel, not the uh, Russian occupation and uh, assault uh, in Syria and Ukraine, and not all of that, not the CIS's military, uh, heavy handed present 100,000 people in Egypt. Uh, no, it's again lesbian rights. Now, this is the issue because they go into Qatar. Their, their jet was turned away and they had to uh, land in Oman and come up with a different jet. And in their first game today, uh, uh, they started the, the game and match, uh, you know, with a simple, uh, symbolic things, and everybody have their hands uh, and their mouths as if, like, you know, free, uh, Qatar is preventing them from expressing how they feel. They lost the game, and they, and I think uh, they found out they are, they are there to use their feet, not their hands. You know, just go and play the game, follow the rule, enjoy the culture, hospitality. As uh, the, the the you know official of Qatar saying, you know I, I, you know I'm, I'm just still as as appalled and I'm uh, uh, you know astonished that uh, that really uh, 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 Arab leaders are, you know everybody wants to be like Singapore you know building sky scrapers and shopping malls and fancy uh, hotels and soccer stadiums and all of that with. Most people are poor and despair. I mean, I, I, I get all that, and I, I, I have, you know, a lot of uh, concern about this. But a game is there that was granted, and the, the tournament, uh, uh, the World Cup uh, started in Qatar. You know, it was a beautiful uh, 
opening people together and bringing together and all of this. We just, you know, we try to kind of uh, uh, make a, a statement and, and, and kind of uh, secure, uh, uh, you know, the, the beautiful game with this hypocrisy from the West about why the uh, gay, gay rights is not in Qatar, why the, I mean, nobody uh, ask about uh, uh, migrant workers here in the United States when they had the World Cup, nobody asked them to uh, improve migrant workers or close Guantanamo or, or uh, you know, uh, stop abortion or, or uh, you know, uh, racial justice and police brutality. Nobody asked. Nobody asked the friends to return billions of dollars uh, to to the stolen from uh, Africans, and nobody asked the French to allow more religious expression public place. Or ask the British, you know, to return all the treasury, get out of the Falcon. We can pick up issue, and uh, but every country, every system has a has an uh, has an issue. I think so, you know this is a sport. Uh, you bring the, the politics in sport, you stop people from uh, showing their support to the Palestinian teams and players been banned by FIFA for showing their support uh, during games uh, to the Palestinians. And uh, you're allowing Israel, which is in the Middle East, to play in Europe as a European nation uh, and competing in World Cup and, you know, and European Championship. Uh, and uh, you kick Russia out of uh, out of European competition and World Cup. So, uh, you know, uh, there is no consistency there. There is If, if you're going to pick up on the small uh, country of Qatar, you really need to raise bigger questions about how FIFA runs and uh, how the money and cooperation are really managing uh, this and FIFA becomes, or the World Cup becomes, Really, a bonanza for advertisement, corporate America, Budweisers, and Geico, whatever. The 15 minutes can save your life, whatever that thing is. Pepsi, Coke, Nike, McDonald's, all those are the really well, the people who make more money than FIFA. All those people are having this uh, massive uh, sporting event. So, the, the, don't give me this moral higher grounds and uh, about uh, you know uh, some of this issue this is a culture and class of culture abortion is allowed here uh, gay and homosexual are allowed there it wasn't allowed here 50 years ago and i think gay will, can have a safeguard in in, in, in morocco or north africa than was here in a small town in iowa in the 80s and 50s and all of that so I, i'm not gonna buy into this you know, I am not against anything. It's a human right issue, the uh, framework. And uh, here we, there's a lot of things that's uh, illegal here, that's legal somewhere else, and a lot of things illegal here and legal somewhere else. Uh, so it's not one uh, stick of moral or culture uh, hegemony that you want to impose it on everybody. Uh, and so, so calm down and, and, and just go and enjoy the game and, and one lot of things, and I think this is the first time FIFA is going to use VAR, which is a uh, video assistant uh, referee. And I know this three idiots sits in the booth watching every freaking move uh, in the field. There was a, more than 30 or 40 different camera and review all the goals. And, and people stop uh, celebrating the goals. In it. And nobody celebrate the goals right away. I mean, they have to wait for the dreadful uh, you know, a bar review, and and I, and I think I'm just reminding for the, the great U Uruguayan writer Eduardo Galino uh, wrote once: uh, goals are the orgasm of the soccer game, and you can't review orgasms, even in Qatar. <laughs>
This is the story of my family, my village, and my religion. This is the story of Kyriakos, the Coptic man who lived in my village and he was buried in my family cemetery. My village Metsuid, a small town in the heart of the delta, with one street, one store, one school, and one cemetery. In that cemetery, was a Coptic man. Before CNN and Al Jazeera and social media, people lived the simple life. And their interest in the outside world did not go beyond the cornfields. So for me, coming back here after all years, this is it's almost... Uh, uh, I come here as a visitor and I still, I feel like I'm out of place, but... Uh... People seem to consult with the same fashion designer for years. They haven't changed. They pray at the same mosque, go to the same school, eat the same food, and burying their dead in the same cemetery. The story started more than 10 years ago. In my visit to Egypt, I went to the village and I visited the family cemetery as I usually do. Then I saw something you don't usually see in a cemetery in Egypt, a Coptic grave was a Coptic name. The name was Kuriakis, died in 1962. There was a debate, there was, there was a discussion, there was opposition. Like my, in my family, we'll be the younger generation debate the older generation. To go and talk and get the Christian version of the Coptic version of this, talk to the, the, the family for the first time. I sat down with Salwa. We talked about everything. She talked about her memories in the village. <laughs> he didn't help us when he was alive. Why would he help us when he dies? Uh, this is Ahmed again. You know, as you know, I've been working on my film documentary for more than 10 years and almost done. Uh, this documentary survived so many things. Uh, Four presidents, two Egyptian revolutions, uh, one military coup, a pandemic, a flood. We're still telling it. We are going to finish it. So please log on to my website and donate. Support us to finish my documentary, The Coptic Grave, the story of Kuriakis, the Coptic man 
who lived in my village and was buried in my family cemetery. So please help. Thank you so much. I'm a 